interesting, Joe. What is the criteria? What's written down in terms of what the criteria is to be a cabinet minister, to be in that cabinet? Because it's an elite group of MPs. And as far as I know, they're normally elected by the public. Yeah, I mean, it isn't legally the case that a person has to be in either chamber, actually, to be a minister. Uh, and indeed, in the 1960s, Alec Douglas Hume became prime minister uh, and then resigned his seat of, from the House of Lords because he was a hereditary peer, uh, ran in a by-election to be a member of Parliament. So for nine days, he was prime minister of the country in the 1960s uh, without being a member of Parliament or a member of the House of Lords. So there's, there's nothing really written down in the, in the Cabinet management it does say now that you've got to be a member of one of the chambers in Parliament. Uh, so you know, that, that is very normal you know, to have, as I say, three members of this cabinet are going to come from that chamber. That is actually fewer than under the previous Labour government. And I think there is a lot of sort of politically charged comments uh, over this particular case. Uh, and it seems that, you know, because it's not the Labour government anymore, some figures on the other side are saying that it is outrageous and undemocratic that you've got somebody appointed to the cabinet from the House of Lords. And I mean, just one final point on, on this point about uh, democratic legitimacy. The analogy with the EU, I think, is a bit flawed uh, because, of course, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, uh, is not elected directly by the people of the UK uh, or by any EU member state. But, of course, the Prime Minister, uh, Boris Johnson, has just been elected quite overwhelmingly uh, by the po po population. Uh, so the democratic legitimacy is a little bit stronger uh, than it is for the point about uh, bureaucrats in Brussels.